Okay, so this this is the the history of game of the year winners. Let's see. Uh, 2014. What a weird year for gaming. 2014. Dragon Age Inquisition won, but the other nominees were Dark Souls 2, Middle Earth: Shadow of Mordor, Hearthstone, Bayonetta 2. I mean, for me personally, Middle Age or Middle Age, Middle Earth: Shadow of Mordor. For me, this is. Like, this is my my bread and butter. I played the crap out of that. Uh, I understand Dragon Age. Some people really loved it. But not really for me. Not really for me. Really weird year for games, though. Because that was also the year that, like, um, Unity came out. And it was the first year with the new consoles. And they were trying to figure out what they needed to do to, like, really take advantage of the hardware. And so a bunch of games launched totally broken. And it was a really weird year. 2015 was a really good year. We had The Witcher 3, Bloodborne, Fallout 4, Metal Gear Solid 5, Super Mario Maker. I never played Super Mario Maker, but I've seen some of the crap that people have put together, and it is ridiculous. It's unbelievable. It's like dreams, but just for Mario. It's wonderful. Um, and, of course, The Witcher 3 won. I, I mean, no complaints there. You guys know me. I'm very happy about that. Uh, Bloodborne, I think, could have taken it easily. I've never finished Metal Gear Solid 5. I've been meaning to to start playing it and go through it, but I just, and I've never gotten the hook to, to go through. So I would probably agree with this, but if they also gave it to Bloodborne, I'd be very happy there. 2016 Overwatch won, but the other nominees were Uncharted 4, Titanfall 2, Inside, and Doom. 2016 was a weird year because I just remember Uncharted 4. I don't really remember anything else, and I didn't really play Overwatch like at all. I've been playing a lot of Overwatch 2 recently, actually. It's one of our guilty pleasure games at night. We play it, um, that sounded sexual. Uh, but we, we play it, Nikki and I play it with some friends and, uh, like my brothers and stuff. And we have a really good time. It's, it's good. Um, so I've been having fun with that, but I didn't play it at all back then. Uh, but Uncharted 4, I think this was the first year that I ever gave out a game of the year because I was doing a couple of videos like randomly to my 500 subs. I, I did a video announcing my game of the year video uh, and I gave it to Uncharted 4. As for this, 2017, Breath of the Wild, no shocker there, but this was a really good year. Horizon Zero Dawn, Persona 5, PUBG, Super Mario Odyssey. People forget how big PUBG was, but PUBG was everywhere. Like it was everything 2017 i would have also given it to breath of the wild i've said for a long time horizon zero dawn i just don't find that interesting i don't find it very compelling and in general it just feels like to me a like really cool proof of concept and then the second game was supposed to go crazy above and beyond and it just did more of the same and didn't do anything fresh and so horizon forbidden west was just really meh for me um, Persona 5 is great, but it feels really weird because it's like a 2013 game for the PS3 that was then ported over. So it's just not really the same, even though it's really good. It's just different. PUBG launched totally broken, still is broken to this day. It's just a train wreck, but it was a huge deal at the time. And Super Mario Odyssey, I find to be extremely underwhelming and I don't really like it. Uh, yeah, Breath of the Wild, easy clap there. 2018... Uh, clear front runners, Red Dead 2 and God of War. I think I gave it to, yeah, I gave it to God of War. Um, thank you for becoming a member, Rice. Uh, thank you. That's gotta be, I thought you were already a member. Oh, well, there you go. Well, thank you. Either way. Um, so this one, like I gave it to God of War cause I thought God of War took more risks. Red Dead 2, I thought was great, but it, other than graphics, it feels like a 2010 game. Like, it feels like they could have made Red Dead 2 right after Red Dead 1 and nothing else has changed. And it's because they have, like, their gameplay systems that work and they don't really change it. They don't shake it up ever, uh, which just makes it a little unexciting and makes it feel a little lame, but whatever. Let's see. Uh, 2019... Sekiro won it, but nominee was also Death Stranding, Super Smash, Outer Worlds. Um, for me, in 2019, I gave it to Days Gone, which was probably my most controversial Game of the Year winner. And it was mainly just because I just like I didn't really love Sekiro, I didn't really love Control, didn't love Death Stranding. Uh, Resident Evil 2 was fine. Super Smash Bros. It's just Smash. It's the same Smash we've had for 20 years. 
Um, and the Outer Worlds was was fine, but it was also really buggy and had problems. So across the board, like I didn't love any of these games. And so I was like, okay, well, if I didn't love any of them and I didn't think any of them were like really great, who do I give it to? I And I decided to give it to the game that I wanted a sequel from the most. And for me, the game I wanted a sequel from the most was Days Gone. I thought that they could actually capitalize on it. So it was almost like a highest potential award. So that, that was at least my thinking there. As for 2020, The Last of Us Part Two. I couldn't come up with any other argument for any other game. Last of Us Part Two is just technologically fantastic. Its gameplay is phenomenal. And I get some people don't like the story. I've found that most of the time when you press people on why they don't like the story, it either ends up being because it's woke or because they killed a character I liked. And like, that's it. But very rarely can they offer specifics. Uh, let's see. As for other stuff, let's see. Um, yeah, I mean, all told, I just have found that very rarely do I get a ton of specifics from people. I think that there is an argument to be made, definitely. I think the pacing in The Last of Us Part Two is really rough. Uh, there's hours of stuff that could have been cut, and I think the game would feel better. It's very self-indulgent. And it's also just extremely draining like it, it is emotionally draining it's by the time it's over you're gonna be like dear god thank you um isaiah thank you for becoming a member by the way appreciate you that's that's my take on the last one part two there's plenty of stuff to complain about and be frustrated about but i don't know it's i i found that most people who want to hate it and really rage against it often can't provide specifics because they didn't play it and they didn't play it because they didn't like it for one of the overarching reasons. Um, like it's fine. I have a buddy and I've, I've told you guys about him before Corey and Corey just doesn't like sad stories. He just doesn't like them. It makes him sad. And he's like, I don't want to, I don't want to watch a movie. I don't want to play a game and be sad at the end of it. So he just doesn't like sad stuff. So he hated La La Land and he will tell you I hate it because that is a sad ending. And I don't like that. I like happy, happily ever after. I was like, fair enough. That's fair. Cool. Whatever. If you don't play The Last of Us because you don't want to see Joel die and you want to just pretend as though they lived happily ever after after The Last of Us Part 1, that's fine. Okay. Just be honest and say that that's what it is. Don't come in here and be like, I really, you know, the writing was really bad. And I'm going to be like, okay, how and why? Like, I'll ask you why and ask you to defend your point. And if you have points to make, then I'm all down to hear them. I, I would love it. I find it really interesting. As you guys know, I made a five-hour breakdown of the game. I know the game very, very well. Um certainly better than most and so i would love to hear and debate the topic but what i found is most people that start to be frustrated about it and complain about it haven't played the game and usually don't really know what they're talking about uh because they're just echoing what they heard some youtuber or streamer say one we can all agree on hopefully is it takes two it takes two was just a feel-good game it just made you happy inside and it was way better than it had any right to be way more gameplay systems and things going on it's crazy if you have somebody that you are close to that you can play this game with you have to play it takes two it is fan freaking tastic it really is um cannot recommend it enough and it was it was such a relief to see that that game won over like death loop because a lot of people were frustrated by Deathloop that it got perfect scores from all these reviewers and then they played it and it was just not that at all. Uh, I cannot think probably the last, I, the latest game that has a similar thing was, um, was High on Life, but on the opposite side of the spectrum. So High on Life received negative reviews from critics, but gamers freaking loved it. And Deathloop, critics loved it, and the average gamer really was like, I like, it's not bad, but it's just not great. Like, it's fine. It's like a great 7.5 out of 10, but it launched super broken. The Juliana stuff was totally broken. You couldn't match make for like all of launch day. And for a few days after that, um, they hold your hand through all of the quests. So the time loop mechanic just isn't really usable because they hold your hand so much. It's just not very good. It's just fine. And plus there's a big story reveal plot twist thing they do at the end of the game that basically spoils the entire narrative. And I don't want to be too specific, but it happened on screen and I was like, what? <laughs> I had to like, I, I remember pausing the game and then I like hopped on my phone and I Googled it because I was like, did I just, did they just say the thing I thought they said? I think they did. 
I looked it up and it's like, yeah, no, no joke. This is the thing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just, I don't want to spoil it in case you haven't played the game yet, but let's just say, I think that there's a plot twist that they do in this game that is horrible. <laughs> like they, I, and it serves no purpose. It doesn't help the story. It doesn't change the story in a meaningful way other than just grossing you out. So I'll just leave it there. But I think a lot of people were worried that Deathloop was just going to walk in and take the game of the year award. Metroid Dread was fine. I played through like 85% of this game. And then I had a bug where the switch deleted all of my save progress. So I had to start over. And apparently it was actually pretty common. A lot of people had this happen to them. Um, they issued a patch or something and it broke save files for anybody who's running a certain version of the switch OS. So I got almost all the way through it and then it deleted my save and I was so pissed off that I just walked away and I, I have not gone back to it since. Maybe I'll do it one day, but it pissed me off enough that I was just scarred. As for Psychonauts 2, really, really good, but it was always going to be sort of niche, so it probably wasn't going to be a serious contender. Ratchet and Clank, again, I thought was fine. Like, good, not great. Um, perfectly fine. Resident Evil Village, again, good, not great. Really, really short for what it has to offer. Certainly more of an action game than survival horror, I would say, but fine. But the one game that I was like, this is actually amazing was It Takes Two, without a doubt. And then 2022, really good game for, uh, really good year for games. Elden Ring, of course. Plague Tale Requiem, great. Ragnarok, great. Forbidden West, eh. Stray, good, not great. And Xenoblade Chronicles 3, I have not played. I don't know anything about it. Stray was overpriced AF. Overpriced, and it's also mindless, which was my frustration. I was like, there's the potential for some really cool environmental puzzles and stuff, but the game, like, has zero challenge. It's, it's, and free climbing, which is the only gameplay system there is, is climbing and navigating levels, basically comes down to point the left stick in a direction while holding X or whatever the A comparable button is, and you just run forward into the wall that you want to jump up and then when you're running in that direction they'll jump up and like there's zero thought involved so i thought it was just very very okay like great as an indie game for like 15 20 bucks for 40 plus bucks really hard to justify and in my video i said it, if you can get it free you should because it was available on playstation plus for free and i said yeah if you can get it free you should play it there and you would have thought that i sacrificed a cat on stream like people lost their minds they're like so you don't want the developers to get money for their hard work okay okay classic youtuber l take i was like i didn't say pirate the game i did not say that i said get the game for free on a place where they've made a partnership with playstation to offer it for free i'm i'm helping you save money what is wrong with you <laughs> like it, was, it blew my mind it actually blew my mind anyway with this 2022 I, I think most of these games could have won and I'd be fine. If if God of War won game of the year, I wouldn't be upset. If Elden, you know, Elden Ring having won, I, I think was fair. Um, God of War was huge, but also Elden Ring. I mean, you have to think Elden Ring was a phenomenon. Like everybody was playing it for months. It was everywhere. And I, I think that that is something that should be considered. I mean, when you're talking about game of the year, it's also about impact. It's not necessarily just about the best game of the year, um, which is why, honestly, like in 2018, I think the argument for Red Dead Redemption 2 winning game of the year at the Game Awards was also very fair. I think that that, that argument could be made very easily because Red Dead 2 was everywhere. Everywhere. Like it, South Park was making episodes about it. Every TV show was referencing it. Talk show hosts were having gamers on to play it and do stuff like that game was everywhere. It was a cultural phenomenon. He took my thing.